According to Transparency International, a Washington-based corruption watchdog, India ranked 81st out of 181 countries on a 2017 Global Corruption Index. Although a democracy, India ranked below undemocratic China and Saudi Arabia. Not all Indians, of course, are content to accept the status quo. One person's fight to end governmental corruption ahead on Unraveling India. In India, it is a newsworthy occasion if an honest officer is found. But such honesty comes at a price. Our guest today, Rinku Singh Rahi, has paid that price. Rinku Singh is a social welfare officer in the district of Latlipur in the northeastern state of Uttar Pradesh. He has exposed various social welfare scams where benefits were awarded to non-deserving candidates or simply pocketed by the bureaucrats and politicians. We spoke with Rinku Singh about his whistleblower work the dangers he faces daily, what inspires him to keep fighting despite those dangers, and if and how to make the system work for ordinary citizens. Mr. Rinko Singh, welcome to Unraveling India. Thank you, Namaskar. Mr. Rinko Singh, can you please help understand the government structure in India? Actually, the word is just like in the USA. India has a federal government structure. There is a federal government and a state government. There is chief minister of each state, which is similar to a governor in the United States. The chief minister appoints ministers for different government departments. There is a vast bureaucracy that works under them. There are principal secretaries, chief secretaries, secretaries working directly with the prime minister, and the ministers to formulate policies. There are dictatorates sitting in the state capital who oversee the implementation of these policies. The state is further divided into districts similar to countries. There is a district magistrate in charge of overseeing government programs in the district. There are officers in charge of different departments working under district magistrate. I am such an officer working in social welfare departments. I am responsible for implementing programs under the direction of directorates and supervision of district magistrate. What role you play in the state government? Actually, make a district social welfare officer who... I implement district social department programs. There are two officers at the district level, namely district welfare officer development and district welfare officer. I am a district social welfare officer development at Lalapur. There are three types of programs I implement. Program one is equivalent to blood transfusion. It is a direct help to the poorest of the poor. Under this government provides pension to the old people. Federal and state government provide funding for this program. Another is National Family Benefit Program. Under this, the family get a benefit of $500 after the breadwinner's death. These two programs are for the families below the poverty line. That is making less than $725 per year in rural India and less than $875 elsewhere. There are other programs to help citizens from lower castes, homeless or old age, etc. Four months after you started working for the state of Uttar Pradesh in 2008, you uncovered a big scam. Instead of praising your work, you were asked to shut up. Were you shocked that instead of thanking you, you were asked to shut up? No, I was not surprised. As we see in the Indian movies how corrupt our system is, personally, I have experienced how corrupt the government system is. I knew that things will not be easy. If the system was so concerned with honesty, then there would not have been so much corruption. I knew I would be attacked. I was threatened when I spoke out. I was even told to take my share and shut up. I had two paths. Either I become corrupt and enjoy my life, or remain honest and be ready to sacrifice anything. I chose the second path, and I feel right that I did the right thing. When you uncovered this scam, you were told to stop being honest. So who told you to stop being honest? 
how would they benefit from you not being honest my subordinates and seniors told me to stop being honest but i was shocked when my principal secretary told me the same he called to tell me that if i didn't stop being honest i would be killed they would find my bones in the jungle the first reason they wanted me to stop being honest as my senior told me was that if people call me non-corrupt it implies that they are thieves the second reason is that if the corruption is exposed at one government office corruption in other offices will start coming out if the mujarfar nagar scam that i exposed had been properly investigated then similar scams would have been exposed also scams are exposed then the corruption will stop the government officers do not want any exposures so they can continue to make money one of my seniors put it very nicely if corruption stops then how will these government officers and their families live extravagant lifestyles at the expense of the poor to safeguard their illegitimate income they do not want anybody to expose the corruption so there was a big nexus among all government offices to make money through corrupt means despite that you did not stop being honest that was very brave of you you continued to expose different scams you have been attacked and shot six times one of the bullets fired at you entered back of your head and came through your left eye you can't see with that eye when i was living in india i had personally experienced total corruption whether it was getting a document securing an education loan or getting medicine from government hospitals except for a few people everyone else is corrupt corruption is now being accepted in india so when you exposed it and was attacked how did your family deal with it even now you are under police protection so how does your family live with that fear it was very shocking for everyone my parents were devastated i was the first in my family to get a good job so they were very happy they did not expect anything like that to happen to me doctors told me that i could not be saved i got a second life my parents had no problem with me being honest but they told me not to put my life in danger even now they are scared for my life there was always family support they never told me to become corrupt and make money they want their child to be alive they can't live with the idea that their child will die before they do you belong to a middle class family in india tell me about your family and your upbringing hey uh father jo hai my father runs a flour mill my mother is a homemaker i have a brother and a sister we are a lower middle class family i faced corruption in india i protested against it but i did not go to the level that you went i was worried that they would hurt me or my family despite these threats and attacks you continue to fight against it it is really brave of you to do so you are a role model for people who are fighting against corruption the government did not provide you any protection until the high court order to do it actually <laughs> starting major attack i was given protection by superintendent of police vj prakash even before i was shot because i had been beaten before for exposing land corruption there was some government land in muzaffarnagar it was supposed to be for industrial usage it was unlawfully controlled by a few people and as a matter of fact it is still under the illegal control of these people i went there to measure the plot and reported that it was under the control of somebody else These people beat me up for reporting it. I was given protection at that time, but when I protested against the corruption of Lucknow, the capital of the state of Uttar Pradesh, the protection was taken away from me. They were not giving me protection. Lawyer Prince Lennon, an expert in public interest litigation, without knowing me, filed a petition in Lucknow High Court for me asking for a federal level inquiry into the attack on me. The high court ordered them to give me back the security. I have a strong reason to believe that if I had not been given the security, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I thank Mr. Prince Lennon and the honorable high court for providing me the protection. It was unfortunate 
that the government had to be forced by the High Court into providing you the protection. But thanks to the protection, you could take your fight against corruption forward. Is it the same situation for all whistleblowers in India? Minister of Law and Justice and Information Technology, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, was a keynote speaker at MIT India conference earlier 2017. This year's theme was Digital India. I asked him what should people of India do when it is illegal in India to pay the bribe, but you can't get much work done without paying, paying one. In his defense, he mentioned the pending whistleblower bill before the Indian parliament. I asked him this question in April 2017. Today is 2018, but I don't think it has been passed yet. Are there any laws to protect whistleblowers? And more importantly, are they being implemented? And is the lack of protection making whistleblowers not to come forward? Actually, protection is a very thing. Identification of whistleblowers. Forget about protecting the whistleblowers. There is no law to recognize whistleblowers in India. The state of Uttar Pradesh does not recognize me as a whistleblower and does not provide any protection. The department treats me as a stain on their reputation and not as someone who is cleaning up the system. There are many honest officers. If the government starts recognizing and protecting them, the corruption can be reduced a lot. If most of the system is corrupt, then who will bring in the law and who will implement it? As they say, who will regulate the regulators. So in this situation, where would the honest officers like you or common citizens like me would go? How do we break this vicious circle? Actually, public demand per sari law aate hain, jisne public demand issue wale. These laws will be enacted only by public pressure. When people get enlightened, these laws will become reality. As a government employee, I have to abide by the code of conduct that makes it difficult to openly discuss my views about it. There are good people in the system, and if there is pressure from them, everyone will start working honestly. How much support have you gotten from the Indian and international communities? If there are natural disasters, then help comes from international community. The international community does not help much with the corruption. Millions of people die in India because of the corruption in Indian railways, government hospitals, food distributions, etc. Hundreds of men, women, and children died in government hospital in Muzaffarnagar, Uttar Pradesh because of the lack of oxygen. But there is no outcry from the international community. There was one murder at Ryan International School and the Central Bureau of Investigation in India was behind it. But no one cares about poor people dying in government hospitals. If there is corruption in private sector, then government goes after it. But who will take action against bureaucratic corruption? So I ask the same question, who will regulate the re regulators? Who will investigate these investigators? Will anything good come out if the international community puts some pressure on these failing institutions? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I can't openly discuss things like this, but I would like to say that public pressure and demand will result in a corruption-free society. The Indian and international communities need to educate the people about their rights and responsibilities. Such an empowered citizen is the biggest support on which democracy will stand. For example, there are so many anti-corruption laws that we can educate people about. I would like to mention the vision we had. Poor people don't get timely information and documents from the government. And if information is made available by phone and documents posted online, then people will be empowered. We bureaucrats fail to implement tools to become transparent and reduce corruption. For example, the Right to Information Act states that all information will be made available online. Bureaucrats give excuses not to make the system transparent. If records are made available online, then corruption can be controlled. Technology can play a big role in making the system transparent, and then corruption will be history.
I agree with you that educating people about their rights and responsibility will help a lot. The media can play a very important role in educating people and technology can play a role in making the system transparent. That's why we have started a website www.mzen.com to allow Indians to report corruption. We will take those complaints and send them to the higher level officers and also create pressure at the international level. Similar to America's Freedom to Information Act, India has the Right to Information Act. How important is this act to expose the corruption and how prompt is the government in responding to the request for information? Undoubtedly, Right to Information Act is a very big tool for armed citizens. Without any doubt, the Right to Information Act is a big tool in the hands of ordinary citizens to fight against corruption. You can measure the power of this act by the attempts of corrupt bureaucrats to make it go away or become less effective. Corrupt bureaucrats delay responses to the RTI requests. I asked for information under the RTI for my own department after the 2008 attack on me. I even made an open protest in the capital city of Lucknow to get the information. You will be surprised to know that I haven't received that information yet. Even I see, as a government insider, that bureaucracy is afraid of this act. They try to find any excuse not to give the information. One of the excuses against the act is that people are demanding too much information too frequently and RTI is slowing down government work. Actually, there is a provision under the act that all the information should be made available online. If information is readily available for people to see, then there will not be any special requests. But corrupt bureaucrats don't want to make information public and delay the responses to the requests. This kind of false propaganda make common citizens think that the act is a hindrance for the government to do the work. I would argue the contrary, that this act will hold the government accountable and increase citizens' participation. Englishman John Acton said that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Don't you think Indian bureaucracy is too powerful to be held accountable and work for people's benefits? What can be done to reduce their power and give it back to the people? Actually, the power is the bureaucracy. Bureaucracy has amassed power from the people and made them powerless. As a government officer, I go to the villages and talk to the poor and lower castes. I see what I saw in the old movies where the British used to go to the village and, and people used to come and ask for help. The situation has not changed at all. We are a democracy, but the people are kept helpless. There is a nexus between bureaucrats, mafias, and politicians that is not allowing people to advance. I even see how bureaucrats make fools out of politicians. I would like to share one incident. I was in a meeting in Lucknow with a newly appointed minister. He was an honest guy and I wanted to do good work. He still is an honest person, but not a minister anymore. He raised a very good point during the meeting to end corruption, but the principal secretary made a fool of him by convincing him that the system is no longer corrupt. Is it because there is no transparency? Yes, sir. Transparency ni kahenge. Isko iska bahut bada reason agyanta bhi hai. Not only because of the lack of transparency, but the main reason is lack of knowledge and illiteracy among common citizens. Corrupt politicians and bureaucrats know that poor citizens do not have the resources to keep tabs on them, so people are struck in a vicious cycle. Bureaucracy takes advantage of people and rules like the brutal emperor. There are definitely good bureaucrats that are helping people, and technology should be used to empower the downtrodden so that they can stand up for themselves and hold bureaucrats accountable. In the beginning, you tried to work honestly, but were told not to be honest. But you continued to work honestly and expose corruption, so you were shot and lost your eye. You continued your fight against corruption, and now you have been transferred 300 miles from your hometown. It is very clear that the government's motive is to suppress your movement. There is a possibility that someone might try to hurt you again. Aren't you scared? Where do you get the inspiration to continue your fight? 
लेकिन जैसा कि मेरा मानना है कि जो अटैक मेरे When I was shot, doctors told me that it was a miracle that I came out alive from this experience. So I think the worst has already happened to me. So I no longer fear the consequences. The life I am living is a gift. This is always the case in bureaucracy that honest people are being transferred frequently and away from their hometowns to remote and backward places. But I think that places like Latapore, where I am currently working, need people like me. So their conspiracy is an opportunity for me. I get the opportunity to serve these people. In this place, I wonder if India really has a constitution. I wonder if we really are an independent country. Talking about the source of my inspiration, I feel I am not alone. I get support from people like Prince Lenin and my friends, even historical icons like Bhagat Singh and Dr. Ambedkar are my inspiration. I am doing very small things compared to what they did. At least I get a salary for my work. They didn't get anything in return. Despite of these challenges, you are still working in the government. How are you now exposing the corruption and are corrupt officers still trying to stop you from doing your honest work? Ha, kafi rukawat aapti hai. Pehle to ek cheez bata dun ke jab jab main corruption expose karta hu. Yes, there are many obstacles. Whenever I expose corruption, the corrupt bureaucracy becomes very hostile against me. When I was posted in Badoi, I exposed big corruption. I found a variety of evidence against one government officer, but there was a nexus between these corrupt officers, so no action was taken against them. From there, I was transferred to Shravasti. There also I exposed corruption. I sensed some corrupt practices by one senior policy officer. I also filed an FIR. I thought I would be attacked again. But then I was transferred. One nice thing about being transferred is that I didn't get attacked. I will be attacked when the corrupt try to transfer me and the transfer doesn't happen. As I mentioned earlier, scams involving Dalits and untouchables, there has been rampant corruption in Uttar Pradesh scheduled caste finance development corporation which exists to help Dalits. The department head office sent me the charge sheet to explain certain things. I wrote them back saying if you investigate properly those who sent the charge sheet to me will be suspended. There are obstacles put in front of me even for small work. In Travasti I I saw how bureaucrats were looting in daylight. There is one initiative currently going on to stop open defecation. Deserving people don't get funds to build toilets but those who have already had a toilet are getting the money. I was an officer there but they were not giving me the information. I filed a right to information request. My appeal will be heard this month. So there are many obstacles, but sometimes I get senior officers who help me. A few senior officers told me that they wanted to be honest, but they can't survive in such corrupt systems. They mentioned that they were happy that I was honest. So I get inspiration and energy from these people. When you joined the government, Dalit and untouchable leader Ms. Mayawati of Bahujan Samajwadi Party was the chief minister of uttar pradesh mr akhilesh yadav of samajwadi party came after her and now bjp's yogi adityanath is the chief minister did you see any improvement in the governance during this three chief minister from the lowest to the upper castes as to thoda sa isme waza answer i can't speak openly about it but i would like to say that there is no charge in my social welfare department just like the old days there is still corruption the technology has been implemented but officers have found ways around it to make money recently i got a call from a minister's office to support corrupt people i refused to do so mm, let's see what happens now i heard you also wrote a poem on corruption can you please read it to us <laughs> actually uh jamer uh I used to participate in the debate competition when I was in college. The issue of corruption used to come up a lot during the debates. So I wrote a couple of lines. It goes like this: Why are you shaking in panic because you take a bribe? Free yourself by paying a bribe if you are caught accepting a bribe. In college, I used to talk about these things, but now I see them with my own eyes. There is not even the slightest fear among the corrupt. They make so much money. that they say whoever comes to investigate can also be paid handsomely now we are coming to an end of the program do you have any message 
for the people in India and the world for fighting against the corruption. To fight corruption, we Indians need to understand who is the master and who is the servant. In a democracy, citizens are the masters and government is the servant. We need to know that the tyrannical days of the British and kings before them are gone. Efforts like yours should also come from a civil society. I read about the role civil societies play in Western democracies. There was an active civil society in India, but now it is dormant. If civil societies become active and powerful, then the government will start retracting. Indians coming from abroad should share their experiences of living abroad. We should keep up efforts to end corruption. There will be failures and dangers, but we should not shy away from the continuous efforts. If we keep on trying, we will succeed eventually. Mr. Rinku Singh, thank you very much for joining me today from India. I appreciate the work you have been doing, being part of the government by exposing corruption. Thank you for your work to give poor and lower caste people the benefits of government services. Thank you. Thank you. Despite of repeated warnings and attacks, Rinku Singh did not give up his fight against corruption. He was suspended on June 5th, 2018. We are glad Gandhi is not alive today to see today's India.